Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your interweb shop teacher, and here I am in front of the little Unimat lathe. Remember, this is a model DB200, and I've done about 8 or 10 videos already on this, so there is a playlist for my Unimat videos, so check that out. And what I'm going to do today is make a little lantern-type tool post, like what you see here. Now, this is the model that I made in rehearsal. So I'm going to pretty much duplicate this, but make a, a few improvements on it. Well, why are you making this, you're asking? You've already got a beautiful little tool post right here, and you've seen me use it, and there really is nothing wrong with this. It is kind of big and cloddy. Holds a quarter-inch square tool bit, and you tighten it down here. The only problem with this is that you have a little bit of trouble adjusting the height of the tool. So really, in order to change the height, a fella has to take shim stock such as this and put it under the tool post, or under the cutting tool rather, and then line up for the elevation of the point of the tool so it's equal to the center height. We've done that on lathe. So what I'm going to do with this, not in this video, but I'm going to remove this rivet here and I'll have about six or eight loose pieces of shim stock that I can use on this tool post. But that's all I'm going to say about this one for now. And this is genuine Unimat product. For those of you who watched the recent video on all of the different accessories that I have received from various donors, you might remember that I got these five pieces here from a man by the name of Steve Lang. Again, thank you, Steve, but there was one item here I could not really quite identify, and it sure did look like a tool post, but the other pieces are missing, and then I did realize that it will fit re readily in any of the T-slots here. Now, I looked through the Unimat catalog that I have from 1973, I believe it is, and it, they didn't show this at all. So I am confused if this was aftermarket. The other thing about it is all of the dimensions on it are imperial, so it's a half inch diameter. It's a 1032 screw, so it obviously wasn't made in Austria, but yet this portion right here fits perfectly into the T-slot of this little rotary table, but we're really more interested in the compound right here. But this won't hold a tool. There's no way to, to tighten it. Even if you tighten this screw down, it's not going to work. So, what am I going to do? So, in researching for this video, I went onto the interweb and I searched for a Unimat lantern type tool post and I finally came up with some pictures of it and this is on Feebay. But the seller here on Feebay had his four-year-old daughter take the pictures and they are so dark and so worthless and there's a bunch of them but you can't even begin to tell what it looks like or is supposed to look like so finally I enlarged it significantly like that and I could basically make out what it looks like but I was still halfway guessing when I made the prototype. So after that exhaustive research I came up with what you see right here. Now I'll have to make some minor changes. Remember this is a prototype. So what we have here is a piece of three-quarter inch diameter stock and I made this just a little bit too long. And this is a three-quarter unified national fine thread, which is three-quarter 16, I believe is what it was. Quarter-inch wide slot for the uh, tool, the actual tool. And what I did on this end, and the original actually was a knurled, not a round knurl with the thread in it. Well, I finally decided... Uh, does it need to be round? You got to be able to get a grip on it, but this works just as well, although I don't like the appearance of it as well as if I had made a knurled nut, and that could be done. And this has to be very, very thin, so it's about a quarter inch thick, and I started with a commercially made nut. I only had one nut, and I sawed it down the middle and faced it off, and this is what I came up with. 
Now I'm going to make this just a little bit shorter by a quarter inch and it'll be just right. There's a half inch hole all the way through for the tool post itself. So why don't we start out by going over to the other bench and show you what I'm going to do and I've got some uh, lathe work to do and some milling. So let's get on with it. This is the lantern tool post off of my Atlas Craftsman 12 inch lathe. Look at how giant it looks compared to this. Now with the traditional type of tool post we have a ring and then we have the little rocker right here so you're all used to that but see I was thinking that this was to be used with a rocker but it was not. This is how it's set up so we can adjust the height of this of course by tilting it on the rocker and changing the elevation on this one we change the elevation or height by use of the thread the other day when I made the prototype I actually started with a piece of bar stock like this three-quarter and I did single point threading that's how I made that thread because it just wasn't going to be lend itself well to be using a die like this so I wanted to make sure it was a straight thread well, I had thought, why not just use a commercially made bolt, when this is the only fine thread, three-quarter inch bolt that I had on the premises, and naturally this is hardened, so it would have to be annealed, and I didn't want to take that time to make that extra step, so in uh, looking for three-quarter stock around here a uh, half hour ago, I found this piece that was already threaded. And it's short enough to hold in the three jaw chuck. So this is what I'm going to start with. I already have the thread. And I'm going to face off the end here and use a center drill and a quarter inch drill. And I'm going to drill one half inch, about an inch and a quarter deep. There's enough there to make two of these in case I screw one up. I wouldn't screw anything up, would I? Okay, let's start off by facing the end. One fourth inch pilot, about inch and a quarter deep, inch and a half. And now drill one half inch diameter until I hit the bottom. I'm at the Bridgeport Mill. That's a one fourth inch cutter. And I've already found the center in the X axis using the little edge finder here. So that's all set and I'm going to mill back and forth till I get almost down to the black tape. Something like that. I won't show all of it but uh, this will be easy milling because of the thin walls. I do not want to create too much of a burr and I'm not going to take that all in one cut. I'm going to nibble away at it a little bit because I don't want the work to move and I don't I want the dimension of the slot to be stable at a quarter inch or just a little bit over not tapered so that's why I do a little bit at a time I know you can't tell here probably but I am on a parallel with a Sterrett V block I do still love Sterrett you know that was tongue and cheek I had to widen the slot just a little bit to accommodate this bit here. The ones that are ground are more accurately sized and that one fits in fine but I was having a little trouble with this one but it fits now. I might also point out to make sure that you start with a four inch piece. Do not cut a piece off this length and expect to be able to hold it and I'm still not, well, I'm going to cut it off now over on the lathe. 
and that's still my handle so to speak and then I'll turn around and face the bottom but I am ready to take it out and I'll deburr it off camera and see you back at the lathe and now I'm going to cut it off so it's 11 16 long Now I don't expect there'll be anybody that will make this because you would need to make this also. And I'm not even going to give you dimensions or anything on that because it's kind of a long shot. Pretty self-explanatory here. Really it has to fit the T-slot. Anyway there's the piece. It looks real good. Now I need to make the nut and I already told you it could be knurled. But I, make it as simple as you can when you have a project. So again this has to be a fine threaded. Do not use a coarse thread because you want that fine adjustment not real rapid coarse adjustment. So as I said I took this is a coarse one but I took this <laughs> the one and only fine one I had over to the bandsaw and I just cut it right down the middle eyeballing it and I still had plenty to face off because really we want this to be quite thin, don't we? So that's how I made that and then I cleaned up the thread, you know, with a, with a tap because you'll have burrs on it. So that's all there is to it. So let's see if it fits together. Okay, here's the prototype. So you can see I made it just a little bit shorter and it, it fits up just so nicely. And the whole idea here now, and this is your tool post wrench, is that I, you know my hands look so big don't they? So if I loosen up the main screw here, the, the tool post tightening screw, I can raise and lower the tool simply by turning the nut until I get it right on center. So it just works very very well. And there's supposed to be a little gap right underneath here. You don't have to worry about that. That's the way it's supposed to be. So if I pull that off again so you, you see what we got here. So it's kind of fun to work on these small things. I'm used to doing larger work and some of you are going to be disappointed and say, well why didn't you make this on the Unimat? Well it just didn't lend itself well to do larger stock. Really this is for three-eighths and under I believe. That, that's my opinion on it now for the, from the few jobs that I've already done on it. Let me know if anyone makes this. Send me pictures of it if you do or if you have an original one and you can make a, a decent picture without your five-year-old daughter doing it. Uh, if you're a good photographer send me some pictures as well. Now I, I know that probably nobody will make this because it's kind of an esoteric part if you will but always think about the different operations that I did here and how you might apply those to other projects that you are doing in your machine shop. If you like this give me a thumbs up and leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.